Why, hello there. Welcome to another unit in Pre-Calculus 12. So we are into chapter 7. This one is all about exponential functions. So you've seen this before, maybe not in graph form, but this is something, uh, yeah, a little bit new. So we're into section 7.1. So what are going to be our purposes for this video? So first, we're going to take a look at some different characteristics of what exponentials are, what the graphs look like. You're going to graph them, show you how to do that. We're going to determine the equation of an exponential graph. So I'll give you a graph. You need to figure out what the equation is. And we're going to learn about exponential growth and decay. Let's go right into this. So exponential equation, what does it look like? So this is your generic form, y equals c to the power of x. You'll probably see this at some point with a b instead of a c, but if you think back to last, uh, the last unit, we dealt with a lot of b's for our horizontal stuff, expansion, compression. So we're going to continue on with that. That's why I didn't use b. I'm going to put c. So c is our base. That's what it's referred to, and x is the exponent, and then y is just the y. So I'm not going to talk about it. What do they look like? So there are two types, growth and decay, as you might have seen from the purposes. Growth will look something like this. So here is an exponential graph. Imagine there's arrows on both ends. It would have taken way too long for me to draw that. So just use your imagination. So this is what's referred to as takeoff, or you can remember it as takeoff, as if a plane is just taking off there, like an exponential graph going as such. I was going to do something like exponential takeoff, but I thought it was lame. But I guess I did it already, so you'll get that. So this is if uh, c is greater than 1. If c is greater than 1, remember that's the base then you're going to have a takeoff as such. Decay looks like this. So this is going to be landing. If we got takeoff on one, we got landing on the other. So going from left to right, you're taking off with the growth, you're landing, landing with decay. This is going to be when C is between 0 and 1. Note with this, C cannot equal 1, because 1 to the power of anything is always going to be 1. And c has to be greater than 0. If it's not, if it's 0, you have issues. Again, 0 to the power of anything is 0. And if it's negative, you're going to have a weird pattern that is not exponential. So it has to be between 0 and 1 or greater than 1. Those are the characteristics of the base. And you'll note with this that there is an asymptote at y equals 0, meaning the line goes infinitely close to y equals zero, but never actually touches it. So something else to be aware of. Let's look at graphing. So we want to graph y equals three to the power of x. So what you're gonna use is a table of values. So here's a table, we put x, we put y, so we pick just x values. Again, you can pick any x values. I'm going to pick um, some specific ones just to give you a sense of what it looks like. So take x equals negative 2, plug it into the equation. 3 to the power of negative 2 gives you 1 over 9. Plug in negative 1, you get 1 over 3. Plug in 0, you get 1. Da, da, da. Keep going. Do, 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 do. Keep putting in your numbers in for x. You get a y value. And then Take a note with this, look at this box here. When x equals one, y equals three. Take a look at it. See if you notice anything interesting about that compared to our equation. I'll come back to it. We'll do one more example. So first, we're gonna plot the dots, then connect them. So it gives you something that looks like this. And this is takeoff, or is this landing? What do you think? Good, I think most of you got that. It was takeoff, or growth function, because you are growing from left to right, reading it like an English book, or German book, I guess, if you're reading German books. Let's try a different one. So graph a half to the power of x. So 
So again, we're going to use a table of values. It's taking a little bit to pop up. There we go. So X, Y, again, I just picked these X values. You can pick whatever X values you want. I did five to give you a really clear view as to what this looks like. If you're confused at all about where these numbers are coming from, the X values I'm just picking, the Y values I get once I plug the X into the original equation. Again, I'm gonna point out something special. Notice this box. See anything interesting with that? You should. Again, look at the look at the equation, look at this box, see if you can find something. Then we plot, connect, da da da. Here we go. And this is going to be decay. You're decaying as X gets bigger. So that is graphing. That's what graphing looks like. Now let's look for an equation. Determine the equations of the graphs below. So here's a graph. It's a growth graph. And we want to determine what is the equation for this. So the trick for this is remembering that y equals c to the power of x. y and the x, those are going to stay. I'm not doing anything with that. I need to look at the c value. If I can find the base, then we're good. So if I look at x equals 1, and I plug in x equals 1 into the equation, y equals c to the power of 1, which equals c. So if I look on the graph at the point where x equals 1, and figure out what the y value is, that will tell me my base. So looking at the graph, at x equals 1, my y value is 6. So that tells me my equation is y equals 6 to the power of x. Let's try a different one. Here's decay. So if we were to try and do the exact same thing, we'd look at this point here. So looking at x equals 1 and looking at the y value, this one's a little bit hard. You might think it's 2, or, uh, sorry, 1 over 3. You might think it's a quarter. Maybe it's 1 over 5. I don't really know. Or maybe 2 over 5. This one's a little bit tricky. So instead of guessing for this case, what I'm going to do is look at x equals negative 1. So if I do that, y equals c to the power of negative 1, which is just 1 over c. So if I can find what's the y value at x equals negative 1, I'm going to get the value that's 1 over the base. So looking here, at x equals negative 1, my value is 4. So when y, which equals 1 over c, is equal to 4, if I wanted to solve for c, flip both sides of that equation, I get that c is 1 over 4. So that is going to be my base, and here's the equation. So those are two ways you can look at it. For growth, it's easy to look at when x equals 1. For decay, often you'll look at when x is negative 1. Sometimes it might be easier to see when, or it's quicker, I should say. If x is 1, you can see it from there. But it depends on what the graph is. So it's good to know both of those methods. Okay, growth and decay. You've seen growth and decay graphs, but now let's talk about what the equations look like. So there's a general equation here for growth and decay that I'm going to teach you. It's a little bit different, I think, than what's in the textbook. Last time I checked, I think. Um, that I'm going to give you this equation. So a general equation is this. I will give you this on the test. So you don't have to memorize it. This is just a much easier, um, a much easier equation to remember than your generic exponential. And I will give you this. So please don't memorize it. So what do each of these variables mean? P is your future population. So in a future point, that's what the population is going to be. P naught or P original. This is your initial population. R is the rate that it's going to change. So if you're going to have a increase in population, this is going to be a one plus R. If it's decay, you'll get the one minus. And I'll show you with an example what that means. That was a little bit tricky. Um, T 
is just your independent variable. That's time. That's going to be something that you'll use. It's essentially your x value, and future population is the y value, just as a recall for that. N increment of rate, and that's really hard to give you a different definition. So I'm just going to show you an example what the n value is. So here's an example. A population of bacteria triples every day. There are three individuals on day one, three individual bacteria on day one. Don't ask me how they figure that out. It's hard to count an individual. Anyways, there's uh, four things I'm going to ask. Determine the equation of this situation. What is the population after six days? And how many days will it take for the population to reach this number? I'm not going to say it because I'm lazy. So let's do that. There's three things. I thought there was four. Determine the equation. So remember, here's the generic equation that I gave you. And I want to look at what are each of these values. So we are told that my initial, our initial is at time zero. The P initial is at time zero. We're told at day one. But since we triple every day, if on day one there's three, that means at day zero, I would have one. We've got R, the rate. So if I'm tripling, that means I'm increasing by 200% every day, or every, uh, yeah, every day. T is time. We're not going to change that. And N is the, um, the time period it takes for this to occur. So it says it triples every day. Therefore, N is going to be 1. So again, P0, we start off with um, one bacteria on day zero. My rate is 200%. I increase by 200%. N is 1 because it occurs every day. So then plug in the numbers, simplify it. P equals T, or sorry, 3 to the power of T, where T is going to be in days. Plugging it in, this is where that comes from. Notice here the base is 3. I'm tripling, so my base is going to be 3. That's a little shortcut you can remember with tripling or doubling. The base is just going to be the 3 for triple and 2 for double. But it's just something extra to memorize. I will give you the equation. You can just work from that. So what's the population after 6 days? Let's take the equation we just got. T is the time. So we just plug in 6. Population is going to be 729. So once you get the equation, not too bad. How many days will it take for the population to reach 59,049? Well, we're going to use this exact same equation, except instead of plugging in for T, now we've got the future value, and the future amount of bacteria. So we are going to try and solve for T. Now at this point, I'm going to um, ask you to guess for what the T value is. I'm going to show you later how to use logs. Um, I know some of you are going to want to use shift solve for this. That's not allowed. So don't do that. You can use it to double check your answer. But eventually I'm going to show you a method to do this that um, you'll be able to show the work. So if you guess, keep on trying, you'll end up with t equals 10. So there you go. And uh, what's this one? So we're going to do a bunch of different uh, situations and just quickly rattle off some equations. So to give you some practice with that. So if you have an increase by 15% in a year, we're just going to assume whatever initial population doesn't really matter. So we're going to put in the initial population as one. I'm increasing by 15%. So I have the plus 0.15 and it's per year. So again, because it's one year that this occurs, the n value is one, which shows here on the t over one. Simplify it, zero, or uh, 1.15 to the power of t. Decrease by 8%. So when we decrease, we're gonna subtract the r value. So minus 0 0.08, and again, it's per year, so t over one. So 0.92, T. Notice with the base, this is the amount of population that's left over after a year or after the time increment. How about if we're going to increase by 2.43% every three years? 
So my initial population doesn't change. I have the rate, which you've seen before, but now this occurs every three years instead of every year. So it's going to be t over three because it's every three years. So that's where that occurs. That's going to be essentially the amount of time for the, the rate to occur. So simplify this. Here you go. So D has a half-life of 70 years. So a half-life, it doesn't tell you a percent. However, if it's a half-life, that means you decrease by 50%. You're subtracting 50%. Those of you who've taken chemistry and dealt with half-life of um, different particles, this is where that comes in. Depending on the particle, it can be pretty long. So we've got a diminishing of 50% or a half, and that occurs over 7,000 years. So notice with this, remember I said there's a trick with if something triples, three is your base. If something doubles, two is your base. If something goes by half, half is going to be your base. So again, here's the tripling. Happens every eight days, so my n is eight. I showed the base as such, but if you just wanted to straight go to the triple, equals three as the base, that's fine. All right, I made a nice little slide at the end because I was tired of being like, oh, is this the end? And then I get to the end and then it's all done. But now I am put this here for you and for me. Just, and I put it up there twice, the end and finish, just so we can make sure I know it's the end. So that is the first section. Um, this is going to be a really quick chapter. There's three sections. It's gonna go by quick. So make sure you stay on top of these things. It's gonna come at you really quick, really fast. So get ready for that. All right, so I've got a treat for you. This end part is always the fun part. I get so many comments about this in person and not so much on video, but more in person. So I've decided I am now gonna invite some guests because I'm tired of saying for you to like and subscribe, I'm gonna invite some guests. So my first person that I'm going to invite is going to be someone really special. This one's going to be little Annie. So let me go get little Annie. Hello? Hello? Can you guys see me? I'm down here. Mm. Mm. Can you lower the camera a little bit, please? Hi. Yes, it's me. I'm little Annie. Mr. Brandon is the best. That's what I was told to tell you. So you should like his videos. They're really nice. I learned so much about the, the maths that I need to know for my kindergarten entrance exam. Um, what else was I supposed to say? Oh, yes, and you need to subscribe. You know, YouTube is full of so many statistics, and Mr. Brandon knows how many people are watching his videos that are not subscribed. And it's, it's almost 50%, so uh, he would really appreciate it if you subscribed. Okay, thank you, bye-bye. Well, there you have it. From a very true source and a very believable source that I did not coerce at all to say anything of the sort. That was all of her own will and mind. I did not contribute to any of that, but you should do what, what she says. Okay, bye. <laughs>